What I'm going to show you in this video is how to create a purchase order directly for a sales order. And this is sometimes called back-to-back -back purchasing, just-in-time purchasing or cloning the sale. It's important to mention that this process is for purchase orders that are being delivered to your own warehouse. If you're sending goods directly from supplier to the customer, that's called dropshipping. And there's a separate video that explains all about dropshipping. It's also worth having a look at creating a purchase order from the low stock report and one purchase order for multiple sales orders. There's different ways of creating your purchase order. You might want to use this technique of copying the sale to the purchase order when a new order comes in where you've not got any inventory, as we have here. So the customer's bought a flannel shirt, but we've not got anything available. So let's create a new purchase order directly from the sale. From the Save Changes menu, click the little right arrow and then click Clone to PO. This takes you to a screen where you can choose which supplier it comes from and because the items on this particular sale are actually connected to a supplier already, BrightPearl's pre-populating this for you. The bottom of the screen contains a few options, adding comments for example to the original sales order, if you wanted to update the sales status perhaps in progress, and then on the purchase order, let's choose the status, whether we link it to the original and which warehouse we deliver it to. Then click clone. That creates a purchase order for the chosen supplier, adds the items to it and most importantly gives you a link back to the parent order. That link also appears in the notes and payment history of the purchase order where we can see it's cloned from the sale and going back to the sales order in the notes and payment history tab we can see it's been cloned to the purchase order. You then send this purchase order off to the supplier in the normal way, receive the inventory and then go back to the sales order to fulfill and ship it. If you want to see what's going on for a sales order and whether a purchase order has been raised for it or not, you can actually put the sales order number in the purchases search and if a purchase does have that sale as its parent, that purchase will appear in the purchases list. Let's take a few moments to look at the differences between the cloning process and the dropship process. So a cloned purchase order is only linked to the sales order at the order level. Whereas on a dropship purchase order, every line item on the purchase order is linked to a matching item on the parent sales order. The cloned purchase order is delivered to your own warehouse, so you do need to receive inventory. Whereas a dropship purchase order is delivered direct to the customer, so there's no need to receive inventory. Now because the cloned purchase order is only linked at the order level, it does not mark the original sale as being fulfilled. Creating a dropship purchase order does mark the sales order line items as fulfilled, because every purchase order item is linked to a matching sales order item. I'm now going to take the concept a little bit further, to give you an idea of how the clone process can be used. We've got a sales order that's come in from a customer, for the same flannel shirt, but this time we've got some custom logo embroidery. We do have this item in stock and what we're going to do is we're going to send this item off to a supplier just to put the embroidery on and then receive it back and fulfill it. So I've allocated this item to this customer so it doesn't sell to anybody else. What I need to do now is create a purchase order, effectively a work order for the supplier to do the work. So let's clone to purchase order in the normal way. Request that they deliver back to our main warehouse which creates the purchase order. Because I'm not actually going to be buying this item from the supplier, I'm going to replace this product with a miscellaneous or service line. So let's copy the description, remove the item, remove the shipping, add a blank row, and then just put custom logo embroidery with the details in there. Say the supplier charges us $5 for that work, and save. You then place the purchase order, send it off to the supplier, and when the goods came back in, you'd go back to the sale and fulfill the sale. So you can see here that because the cloned purchase order is only linked to the original sale at the order level and not the line item level, you can add or remove products to that purchase order in any way you like. If you only wanted to copy some of the lines from the sale to a new purchase order, instead of cloning the whole sale and removing the lines you don't want, what you can do is you can actually select the lines that you do want on the purchase order, click clone to purchase order here, choose your warehouse in the normal way, where you'll get a purchase order with just the lines you've selected. So that's the process of creating a purchase order for a sales order, back to back, just in time, or what we call cloning. I'm sure you can find a number of different uses for it.